and a usher in a church. I was at a funeral, and he gave me a priority seat <laughs> program. Thank you very much. Now, Mrs. Bruce, would you come forward? Please? And that is the introduction. <laughs> <laughs> What are going to say about you? You never know what's going to take place until <laughs> Mr. Toastmaster and fellow members, I know guests. As previously mentioned, our hearts are Pass that over. Are you going to remember? Oh. Our hearts are heavy after <clears throat> the tornadoes in Newcastle, Shawnee, and more over the past week. But you may want to ask, can this happen here? Are we prepared? Is your company prepared for a business continuity in case something happens to your business? To make it more personal, am I prepared? And are you prepared? <coughs> I'm going to speak briefly this evening <coughs> on disaster planning and three facets of disaster planning before the disaster, during the disaster, some, and sometimes it's not applicable, and also after the disaster. If you have a plan, you need to use it. If you don't have a disaster plan, you need to start building one. And I caution you, if you build one, don't overplan it, don't overdo it, because this will be a growing document. I have handed out, or I have had, I have had passed out to you, two resources. One is from FEMA.gov, the Federal Emergency Management Association, and also the Red Cross, RedCross.org. If you would take those back home with you and click a couple of times, they have very good checklists for before a disaster, during a disaster, and after a disaster. Disasters being floods, tornadoes, <coughs> hurricanes, which we don't have a lot of those here, fires, and I believe also maybe snowstorms and blizzards and ice storms. They're both very good. With disasters, I'm sure your relatives outside of this region were like mine. Oh, you okay? Or were you in the tornado? Were you in the tornado? Communication. Communication, you can't have too much of it. For us, it wasn't a big deal because we were 100 miles from the epicenter or from the ground zero. But if we were in ground zero, what I've experienced going through some emergencies, some disasters, personally and at work, is that you really don't have a lot of time to talk to every aunt and uncle on the East Coast. You really need to appoint someone, try to, try to appoint someone, say in Chicago or in New York, to act as your spokesperson for the family so you can get some things done. Are you going to stay there? Are you going to evacuate? Are you going to wait and see what the agencies are going to do? Are you going to move to a shelter? There's a lot of things that you have to do when you're going through a disaster. So communication is going to be important. Cell phone towers will probably be overloaded. Some people you'll have to talk to, your, your point person. But for some of the others, you know, family here locally, get, get some practice on texting. Texting, I, I came up with an analogy, is like taking a tablespoon of water versus a cell phone call, which is like four or five gallons of water. That's the relationship and the power and the time to make that communication. If you can, schedule your, schedule your communication with your point person. When I wrote out Hurricane Ike in Houston, I would communicate with my wife via email about every three hours, every three or four hours. So for one, it saves your battery. We had, didn't have any electricity, so you have to make use of your resources, what food we have at that time, during that disaster, you know, after the disaster. And if the, and if the networks are up, if your home network's up, your home network is up, and other sources, you can use email, of course. Speaking of data, make sure you have backups of your digital photos, 
any important papers, insurance papers. Now, these are preferences. You don't have to, but you'll find that it'll be easier after a disaster. Credit card numbers, credit card phone numbers. Speaking of phone numbers, your phone numbers. If you lose your power of your cell phone and all your numbers are in your cell phone and no place else, mm -hmm. that's a problem. And these backups should be in a nice fireproof, waterproof safe like I purchased in the past year or off-site. There was one gentleman in Moore, I didn't get his name, that actually rode out of the zone before the tornado struck the city of Moore. Tornadoes typically travel from west to east or maybe southwest to <clears> northeast, <throat> somewhere in that small area. And apparently he had been in the previous tornado, so he knew that, or maybe he assumed that his structure was not going to be strong enough to withstand an F4 and F5 tornado. So he went north to Edwin. <clears throat> know where you're going. If you're going to evacuate, know where you're going or take a paper map in case your GPS doesn't work or you get lost or you have to get on the back roads. Some things to consider. One other thing you want to plan on before, during, and after a disaster is cash on hand. Having evacuated Houston on Hurricane, I think it was Hurricane Rita, I did not have enough cash. I only had $40. Well, I lost up on the ATM on the way out of town. The <laughs> ATM <laughs> were out of money. <laughs> so I drove all the way from Houston to Tulsa with $40. <laughs> So you need to either have cash on hand in your pocket, maybe a $100 bill, or maybe in your safe. You need to have water. You need to have non-perishable food if you do decide to stay at your residence after a particular disaster. And it depends on if you stay at your residence. It depends on the, on the type of disaster. The ice storms three or four years ago, I wasn't here. I was getting all the news in Houston. It depends on what the disaster is. That's going to be a personal call that each of you will have to make at that time. So in summary, can this happen here? Are we ready? Are you ready? Do you have a plan? Are you going to start working on a plan? I recommend you start working on one. Use the resources that I just handed out. Your plan should cover before the disaster, during the disaster, as applicable, and after the disaster. Remember, 10 minutes of planning saves 60 minutes of heartache on the backside. And Ben Franklin put it this way, by failing to prepare, you're, you are preparing to fail. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you. Take a couple of moments there to fill out your uh, little slip there that you have. And while you're doing that, I'll say a couple more words. I really appreciate what Bruce Adam does his, as far as his speeches are concerned, due to the fact that they are very constructive <coughs> subject matters. And uh, the last one I think that I remember was on gasoline. And I really appreciate that. And then, of course, this one here is very valuable. You never know what type of emergency that may occur. And I would suggest that you think about those things. And frequently, the reason that we don't think about it is we're so concerned about the Joneses and the, and the, and the Susie Cubes. I resemble that remark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, T.A. Okay. <clears throat>